There is a saying in the exploration business that the odds are best in the shadow of the head frame. This saying is owed to the simple fact that large gold systems have the capacity and often do generate repeat deposits in close proximity. The production history of the Homestake District in the Black Hills of South Dakota is a testament to the prolific gold system that has yielded more than 44 million ounces from an area measuring scarcely 12 kilometers from one end to the other. 90% of that gold came from the successive repeating limbs or ledges of the Homestake Formation at the site of the Homestake Gold Mine. Despite the great mineral wealth of the Homestake District, there has simply never been the investment in exploration that has warranted a 44 million ounce gold system. This lack of exploration can be attributed to Homestake Mining Company's dominant land position in the area and the operating mine's ability to generate replacement reserves within easy reach of the existing infrastructure for most of the 130 years the mine operated. Upon founding the Homestake Mine and Homestake Mining Company in the late 1870s, George Hurst began a policy of property consolidation that continued until the company virtually owned the district and operated without competition. The unprecedented consolidation of an entire mineral district is owed to Hearst's great vision, the financial success of the Homestake Mine, and to the fact that it simply didn't require the acquisition of huge tracts of land to keep motivated explorers out of the district. For the first 100 years of its operation, the business of replacing the third of an ounce per ton free milling ore reserves at the Homestake Mine proved to be a matter of following the plunge of the ore body deeper to the south and exploring a short distance to the west in successive repeating ledges of the iron formation host. By the 1980s, change was on the horizon. The rising cost of production from the 8,000-foot-deep mine was finally providing the incentive needed for the company to explore for shallower, low-cost reserves beyond the confines of the existing mine. Richard Bachman, Dakota Territory's president and CEO, was selected to lead Homestake's search for new deposits buried under the younger rocks that dominate the surface of the district. Bachman's drill programs traced the hidden extension of the Homestake formation undercover and conclusively proved Homestake-style deposits can and do repeat within the structural corridor north of the mine. The immediate success of these programs led to an accelerated investment plan that ultimately became the company's growth strategy for the 1990s. Unfortunately, low gold prices persisted, and in much the same way that companies have reacted to low prices in recent years, Homestake made the decision in 1994 to curtail worldwide exploration, including its drill programs in the Black Hills. By 2001, gold prices had not improved, and without further options to reduce operating costs, the Homestake Mine was closed. At about the same time, the Homestake Mining Company itself was acquired by Barrick Gold, and both the initiative and experience to explore the 44 million ounce district were lost. Over the past 20 years, there has been virtually no exploration conducted in the northern Black Hills of South Dakota. Important property that Homestake Mining Company had held for more than a half century and explored with drilling has been divested, thus setting the stage for Dakota Territory Resource Corporation. My name is Rick Bachman. I'm president and founder of Dakota Territory Resource Corp. And during the 1980s and 1990s, I managed gold exploration for Homestake Mining Company in the Black Hills of South Dakota. We spent $70 million, drilled over 300,000 feet in 2,500 drill holes. We developed a unique understanding of the district and we made numerous gold discoveries. Some of them we produced, and some of them we control today.
The entire body of homestake research and drilling has served as the basis for the 3,057-acre property position that Dakota Territory has quietly assembled over the past four years. Dakota Territory's programs are targeting shallow, high-grade gold mineralization with a much lower development threshold than existed in the $300 price environment of the 1990s. Dakota's Paleoplacer property has been permitted and is now ready for drilling with near-term production potential. The Black Hills of South Dakota offer a safe, low-cost jurisdiction with existing mining infrastructure and skilled workforce. Without the political risks and financial burdens associated with many of today's remote exploration camps, a much greater percentage of every Dakota Territory investment dollar goes into drilling. Nothing enhances exploration success like more drill holes in the ground.